wrote a book. Actually, I'm not here to talk about the YES program. Uh, I'm here to talk about something which happened because of the YES program, so all right. So we wrote a book, it's called Ready, Study, Go. And it's about smart ways to learn. Um, it's about overclocking your brain. It's about uh, brain hacks. Can you make your brain work better than it already does? The first brain hack is amazingly sleep. Now, sleep is one of the most dangerous things we do. We are utterly vulnerable. Anybody can do anything to us. We don't even know whether we are going to wake up in the morning. And yet we say, my bed, my blanket, my pillow. Put yourself three, four thousand, five thousand years ago. Uh, sleep is basically saying, come, eat me. One would think that evolution would have made it vestigial by now. Uh, but it's still there and all of us want our seven, eight, nine hours of sleep every night, isn't it? So why is sleep so important? Yes, a uh, little bit of anatomy. So we have a skull and in the skull there is a brain and that brain weighs around a kilo and a half, approximately. The brain is supplied blood by two arteries. If you touch here, you can feel them pulse. Go on, do it. Yeah, can you feel that pulse? That's the pulse of life. That's what's keeping you alive. Yeah. Now, just imagine two tubes, one and a half kilos of weight on top. It's going to get squished. You would be dead before you were born. Anatomical problem, right? One angel who got an A in anatomy suggested a solution which was implemented. She said, float it. Just put some water and let it float. And that's what happened. It's called cerebrospinal fluid. You can see the blue thing going around the brain there. Yes, it's called CSF, cerebrospinal fluid. And because of the cerebrospinal fluid, your brain actually floats and weighs just 300 grams. And everything is great and life goes on. Now, the CSF is not only to float the brain. The brain uses 20% of the energy of the body. And uh, that's a lot, you know, while you're talking, listening to me, uh, interacting, doing the stuff of everyday things, whatever we do, the brain is using a hell of a lot of energy, right? And uh, what is happening is that when energy is used, a waste product is created. That's basic chemistry. Right? The waste product of the brain is called beta amyloid, which is just a very fancy way of saying brain shit. And you don't want a brain full of shit, do you? Right? This brain shit is particularly toxic because it has been linked with Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. So it's very important that it gets flushed out. And that's what the CSF does. It goes in and cleans it up. It goes in and cleans it up. And this is happening the whole day. But there is a lot of zzzzing going on in your brain. There's a lot of electricity, there's a lot of chemical reactions going on in your brain every second. And so the CSF cannot go all the way in. And that's where sleep comes. When you sleep, the interstitial spaces in the brain, the, 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 the spaces between the tissues in the brain, they actually become bigger, increase by 60%. And the CSF goes in there and cleans it up. And that's why when you get up in the morning after a good night's sleep, you say, I'm feeling so fresh. Yes, someone flushed. <laughs> right? So sleep is super important. You have an important interview tomorrow. You have an important presentation tomorrow. You have some important exams tomorrow. Make sure you sleep in the night. Otherwise, you go there with a brain full of shit. <laughs> okay? And perform accordingly. The next brain hack is amazingly exercise. Now, you might think, what has exercise got to do with the brain? I mean, yes, if you exercise, you get a body like that. And by the way, that was Lalit who just got the 100 bucks. Same guy. You know, he wears more clothes when he doesn't exercise. What has exercise got to do with the brain, right? Well, uh, our body is designed to move. See, four or 5,000 years ago, our body was basically doing only two things. We were basically doing only two things. Either we were running after something we wanted to eat, or we are running away from something that wanted to eat us. <laughs> right? So it was a question of survival. Right? We needed to be fit. Right? And that's why exercise comes into play. And when you exercise, 
uh, a very interesting thing happens in the brain. Uh, you know what, instead of telling you about it, let me just invite Dinesh. Come on, Dinesh. You know, I read recently that sitting is the new smoking. Sitting is injurious to your health. And a neuroscientist friend of ours put it very nicely. He said the state of your bum is the same as the state of your head. So if your bum is feeling flat and uncomfortable, chances are you're not hearing anything anyway. So let's fix that. Over to you, Dinesh. Can we do that? You'll have to play along with me for one minute. Come on. Yeah, Jiggle your bum. Come on, everybody, do it. They say hips don't lie. <laughs> And this is a lesson from the animals. What do they do? They give a stretch when they're sitting for some time. Oh, stretch in all directions with some deep breaths. Oh. Come on, do it, everybody. Don't be shy. <laughs> You're a TED audience. <laughs> it's always participative. And then what do the animals do? Shake, 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 shake. Come on, shake all the parts of the body that you can shake. Hair if you have any. And a little bit of... Go on your toes. To your right. A little faster. To your left. Move, come on. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Just notice how you're feeling now. Are you feeling a little nice? Yes? Some of you are feeling very nice. <laughs> It's amazing how this works. You just do two minutes of a little bit of moment and your brain becomes happy. It says, oh, wow, he's moving the body. <laughs> and it releases, the brain releases something called dopamine and endorphin, which basically makes you feel great. Have you seen how people walk out of a gym after they work out? <laughs> that is the dopamine endorphin effect. It's your brain going, good job. So exercise is a super important thing for you. Now, what is it to do with learning and the brain? Well, we start life with about 100 billion neurons in our head, right? And each of those neurons, they have 2,000 to 10,000 dendrites, which actually interact with each other in more ways than the number of elementary particles in the universe. You've got a super advanced piece of organic technology sitting in your head. Unfortunately, because of all that electricity zipping and zapping, some of these neurons are getting fried every few moments. Every day we lose around 9,000 neurons. If you do drugs, you know that sniffing business and all that that people used to do in college, you lose 300,000 neurons a day on that day. It's not good for you, please don't do it. Because we are losing these neurons every day, you are, as you grow older, you are working with lesser and lesser brain, so to speak. So it becomes more and more difficult to do stuff that you could do easily earlier. That was what was thought. But in the early 2000s, a whole new field of neuroscientists came about, and it is called neurogenesis, where it has been conclusively proved that when you exercise, the neurons regenerate. You get new neurons. So sleep gives you a cleaner brain and exercise not only gives you a fantastic body, but it gives you a younger brain. Okay, so hit the gym guys, all right? The third uh, brain hack is what Art of Living has been doing for the last 35 years and what I have been doing for the last 25 years. And we've been telling everybody it's good for you. Uh, it was not until I wrote that book, I realized really how good. Uh, let me, let me tell you why meditation is great. So again, I want a little bit of audience participation here. Uh, I want you to turn around to someone sitting to your left, right, aage, piche, whatever, and shake their hands for 20 seconds while looking in their eyes. Come on, do it everybody. Just shake the hands of somebody sitting next to you for 20 seconds. Fine, if, uh, you can be three people also, it doesn't matter. You don't need to say anything, you can just laugh. 
Okay, if you really like your partner, you can give them a hug. Go on, give them a hug. Come on. Come on, do it. Do you notice you're feeling good? Yes? Turns out that the brain, when there is physical contact for more than 20 seconds with anybody you like and they like you, the brain releases something called serotonin and oxytocin, which are the happiness hormones. That's why you hug someone when they are feeling not so good. When they're not feeling good, they've got cortisol and adrenaline running through their system. And then when you hug them, the brain starts going, ah, that's nice. Serotonin and oxytocin. <laughs> what does meditation do? Meditation floods your system with serotonin and oxytocin. Yes. Now, uh, again, a little bit of evolution. Yes. You know, the mid middle part of our brain holds the fight or flight response. Have you heard of that? Fight or flight? Yes. So three, four, five thousand years ago, if you're in a jungle and you are confronted by a tiger, you cannot hold a committee meeting figuring out what to do now. It has to be an instantaneous decision that needs to be taken. I need to run or I need to fight. So whenever you feel threatened, unsafe, uh, scared, fearful, all these things, your brain does this fight or flight. It basically pumps cortisol and adrenaline into your system. And what these two things do is they remove the blood from the stomach and pump it into the extremities, basically getting you ready to fight or flight. That's why when you are scared, you feel some cold sensation here. Have you noticed that? Dar lagta hai, to thanda ho jata hai. Right? It also flushes the blood from the brain downwards. It doesn't put, keep, it does not keep too much uh, blood in the brain because you are getting to either fight or flight. Okay? That's why a person who is scared can't think. He does not have the energy to think. He does not have the blood to think. All right? Unfortunately, our brain does not understand the difference between the threat that a tiger could pose or a snake could pose and the threat of an interview. So you are right there, standing there, you've got four people in front of you. This is the most important interview of your life. You have to crack it. Utterly alone, utterly threatened, utterly unsafe. What's the brain going to do? Cortisol, 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 cortisol. Right? What does that mean? It means the body is going, run, run, man, run. <laughs> or punch that interviewer in the face. Both are not very good interview strategies. Right? Uh, you go, you know, you study at home, you are perfectly fine. You go in the exam hall, you get threatened. Now you're supposed to write the paper while your brain is going, run, run. Little difficult to perform. Yeah, we've all had that. No, all of us who have given exams, haven't we gone to exams and forgotten everything we know? And the moment we come back home, we remember everything. <laughs> Sounds familiar? It's just your brain's evolutionary response to fear. It's your brain's evolutionary response to feeling threatened. That's all. A meditator, and this is where it becomes interesting, knows how to flood the body with serotonin and oxytocin at will. So even though he is feeling threatened, he can bring about that change in the chemical atmosphere of the body and start feeling all right. He can tell the brain, hey, chill man, it's just an exam, it's not a snake. Relax. And the brain says, oh, all right then. <laughs> right? So a person who is facing an interview who is a non-meditator is going, cortisol, 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 run, run, run. And the other guy, serotonin and oxytocin, oh, yes, what? else can you ask me? <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? So sleep gives you a cleaner brain. Exercise gives you a younger brain. And meditation gives you a happier, more productive brain. Right? Now I know we have a few minutes left and I'm going to invite Dinesh again to lead us through three or four minutes of a little bit of meditation. So can we all just close our eyes for a minute? Oh, it's nice to sit on the TED stage. 
thighs and take a deep breath in and as you breathe out just let the whole weight of the body sink into the chair if the body is like the wick of the candle the mind is like the glow it's inside and all around us take your mind to your feet just become aware of your feet your knees thighs and hips shoulders right arm loka samasta sukhino bhavantu om shan Shanti, Shanti. With a few joyful breaths, you may bring a little movement in the body.